When you export your images for print or the web, you'll often find the results look a bit dull due to problems with out of gamut colors. But with soft proofing, you can preview the output to optimize for better and more consistent results. In this video, you'll learn three different ways to soft proof in Photoshop, including using the latest version of WebSharp Pro, the latest version of Lumenzia, or the tools built into Photoshop. Let's start with WebSharp Pro, where you notice that when I hover over the sharpen button, it turns red and I'm seeing some changes in the image. Now, if I hold the shift key when I move away and stop hovering, it'll stay active. And you can see I've got a soft proof over the image and I've got some red text telling me what the panel is doing, which in this case is showing a gamut clipping warning for the sRGB color space. By default, you won't see the text or the proof. We need to turn that on. For that, you need to change a few settings. So go to the top right flat menu in the panel, go to tool tips and info, and make sure documents and PS info is turned on. This setting is what controls that extra text below the panel. Say OK and make sure you resize the panel because if the panel looks like this, you won't see it, so you want to click and drag down the bottom edge to actually see that extra text. For the proof, you want to go to Settings, General, and look to Proof and Hovering Over Sharpen. This is the setting you need to change. By default, it'll be off and you won't see any proofing, but if you change over to Gamut Warning, then you see gray pixels if they're applicable, showing where your image is going to get clipped when it's converted to your intended export space, which is this space here. So if I was converting to, say, Adobe RGB, I'd have a warning for Adobe RGB, or if I was converting, you know, if I didn't convert, I wouldn't see anything because, of course, if you don't convert, nothing gets clipped. Most of the time, you'd be in sRGB when you're exporting to the web, so I think that's a great choice. The uh, gamut warning is great to see where there are changes in the image, but it doesn't really show you how it's going to change. For that, you want to switch over to a soft proof. And the soft proof is an actual simulation of the result you'd expect to see for this image when it gets converted over to sRGB. Let's take a look more closely. So we'll click on Done, zoom in here, and take a look, here's our original image, which happens to be in Pro Photo. And then when it's soft proof, because we've turned that on now, we see the change in the reds there. I see a pretty substantial change in the reds of this image. If you don't see a big shift, then you're probably on an sRGB monitor and can't see wide gamut colors. You've already lost that color. But on my monitor, in the original, I see a nice gradient around these lights, looks very natural. I see real depth and dimension to the metal here. Whereas in sRGB, I'm gonna hold shift and leave that active everything here gets clipped to pretty much the same value of red because the closest match happens to be the same value across this entire gradient. And so this looks pretty awful. And same thing for the metal here. It just really looks much more diminished when converted to sRGB. So while I'd like to fix that, let's step back from this image for a moment and consider a little bit of theory about color spaces before we work on the rest of this image. So I'm going to switch to this image, which I've created with the most vibrant red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta available in various color spaces. So on the left is a block of Adobe RGB and then Rec 2020 RGB and then Pro Photo RGB. And each of these is surrounded by a thin little strip that's not marked of sRGB. So I've got sRGB red around Adobe RGB and around red Rec 2020 RGB and then so on for each of the various different color bands here. And what jumps out to me right away, at least if you're on a wide gamut monitor, I mean, if you're on an sRGB monitor, then my soft proof for sRGB, this is what you would see, where every bar looks the same with no differences at all. But on a wide gamut monitor, the reds here are very clearly much more bright and vibrant than the sRGB. So these wide gamut spaces really add a lot of value in the reds. Same for the greens, the cyans, and the magentas, but the yellows are quite muted. I see almost no difference at all for Adobe RGB, and the blues, same kind of thing. So why is that? Let's take a closer look by switching to another application known as the ColorSync Utility. This is a free program available on every Mac in the Application Utilities folder. I'm not aware of a similar free program for Windows, but if you are, please comment below. But within ColorSync Utility, you go to Profiles, and then you can go sort your profiles by color space, and then open up the RGB profiles and choose something like Adobe RGB or Display P3, and you'll see the gamut shown on the right, and you can click and move around and visualize the limits of that color space. Now, by default, this isn't all that helpful, but if we right click, we can change from the lab visualization over to the YXY model, and then click and drag this around. And if I hold the option key, I can click and drag up to kind of zoom back. And now I'm seeing that familiar horseshoe shape, which are the limits of human vision. So down here is the most vibrant spectral red that a person could see, and yellow, green, cyan, blue, etc. And what you see is that for display P3, it does a great job of getting to the limits of yellows and oranges and things like that, but the greens could push a lot higher. The cyans could push out quite a bit more. Even the blues and the reds could get quite a bit better. Now, this is not perceptually uniform, so don't assume that this green gap is 
necessarily you know three times bigger than the gap over here or something like that but it does show you where there are limits to this color space compared to what you could potentially see now to make the comparison a little more interesting let's step back to our image here and compare adobe rgb to srgb so for that let's go click on the bigger of the two spaces adobe rgb right click and choose to hold for comparison so this locks this in as a reference and then go click on srgb and you can see both at the same time so the gray is the adobe rgb and you can see it extending in every direction at least as big as the srgb and so when we consider this question of why is the red so much better but not the yellow well it looks to me like the reds have almost no benefit and there's some benefit in the yellows but that's not jiving with what we see here and the reason is that this is a three-dimensional color model if we click and drag and move to the side you can see that the adobe rgb red actually can get much brighter than srgb and that's the benefit there whereas these yellows there's simply not enough difference for it to really be visible at least on this monitor so that explains those differences now what about some other ones what about if we look at the blues which are no different here in pro photo than srgb i mean why is there no real benefit let's go step back and we'll click on pro photo right click hold it for comparison and then go click on srgb and obviously the blues go out much much further now the relevant part of these blues is limited by this line because that's the limits of human vision this little stripe here right the horseshoe so when we go beyond this line these things are out here they're theoretical colors and maybe a, a bee or some animal could see these values but people cannot so these are kind of fake or imaginary colors but there are colors within the range that are visible to humans that are encodable in pro photo and not srgb so why don't we see that extra benefit in the image right we don't see any real difference well it turns out there is a difference and i've created a saturation layer with negative saturation and if i turn it on now you very clearly see that the pro photo swatch has a lot more blue than the surrounding srgb the problem here is not that pro photo doesn't have a brighter blue or more vibrant blue it's that my monitor cannot show it to me so if we jump back in here i've got an old calibration for my monitor here so I'll click on my iso monitor calibration right click hold for comparison and let's compare that to srgb we see that the blues aren't that different my monitor does not display the blues out here so in this case pro photo does capture more blue but my monitor won't show it to me. I don't see any benefit compared to sRGB. So maybe in a few years, I'll have a different monitor that will show me those blues and then I would see the difference. But at this point in time, I can't see it. So if you ever want to explore that, you can always add a desaturation layer like that. Or there is a tool built into Photoshop. If you go to edit, color settings, there's this option in here that says desaturate monitor colors by a configurable percentage. If you turn this on, you'll see that all the colors in your image desaturate and you would see these differences. I wouldn't recommend using this because it reduces the accuracy of what you're seeing, but it does let you see colors that are otherwise not displayable on your monitor. And you could see some out of bounds values on an sRGB monitor to help predict what something is gonna look like in another color space, but I'd probably just leave that off. So I think that's enough theory. Let's step back and consider our image and how can we improve on what we saw here when we convert to srgb and try and save some of those values so the lights and the metal look a little bit better for that let's go start playing with lumenzia where if we hover over the gam button we'll notice that similarly it lets you soft proof when you hover over the gam button and just like webshare pro it's not on by default so we want to go to the top right flyout menu go to the option for tool tips and info and also enable document ps info and make sure you've stretched on the bottom of the panel so you can see the red text when you're proofing and the settings for this are actually in the GAM button. So you click on GAM and the relevant options are the bottom box here. So I have got my warning on, it would be off by default and we wouldn't see any sort of warning, but I could turn on the warning or I could turn on the soft proofing in my image here. And up top here, we can choose which profile we're gonna view. Now, when you click on this, you'll see we have many more options because Lumens is a general purpose tool. And since it's also gonna to export to printers and other devices, we have a full range of RGB and CMYK options here, but it's excluding ones you wouldn't use. So the list is much smaller than we see in Photoshop, just whittled down to the ones you would actually use. And so you can find the one you want. I might go and choose something like, uh, let's preview uh, for a canvas. Right, you can see here the problem's even worse than it is for sRGB. So maybe we'll work on this, it's a little more obvious. 
Now, when you're sifting through these profiles, if your list is still too long, you can click on one or two boxes here to kind of reduce the list and filter it down to just printer profiles. Or if you're on a Mac, you can also show the ones that are installed in your user folder. This is not a Windows option, just Mac only. So let's go work with this uh, Simply Canvas option here and take a look at how we would fix the colors here. So we'd say done, and normally we just go and hover to view that. Let's go zoom in and see more closely what's going on here, where you can see those weird outlines there. Now notice there are some changes in like black values in the background as well. And what's going on there is they're not actually necessarily always out of gamut. Sometimes some of these areas are in gamut and they change anyway. So outputting for a printer is a little bit more of a nuanced issue. We can see here that we're clearly going to have problems around those lights and I'd like to do something to address that. So I probably need to lighten or desaturate these areas to try and preserve some kind of a gradient when it gets clipped to the limits of my uh, canvas. For that, I'm going to go click on GAM. There's actually a tool built right into Lumenzia, which is Add Soft Proof Corrections Group. If I click on that, it creates this group and populates it with an unadjusted HSL layer and a luminosity mask on it, which is biased towards the pixels which are out of gamut. It'll actually let you adjust all the pixels, but it's much more targeted to the ones which are out of gamut. So if I go and desaturate through this layer, I'm going to bring back these colors in a nice and natural way with this adjustment and it's turned off by default. So I'm just viewing my image normally. But when I go and hover for a soft proof, you notice that that group, this watch the eyeball visibility here. When I go and hover, it turns on. So what I'm getting here is my soft proof is turning on. I'm going to hold shift and leave this active. My soft proof has become active, which I see here, and my proof corrections group is turning on. So I'm able to, in this case, compare my original to what my fixed or corrected version would look like when I export it. So that's very handy to make both changes at once. And that's why we have this special group. There's no similar option in WebSharp Pro, but if you want to create a group or a layer that just simply says soft proof, that's what it's going to look for. It's just the name soft proof. You can do the same thing and you'll see that WebSharp Pro also honors that group. We're just going to keep working with Lumenzia here. So with this adjustment, I'm going to go lock it into place by holding down the shift key and leave it active. Let's double click on our HSL adjustment and I want to make some changes to just the reds. So let's switch over to the red values and let's bring down the saturation, maybe like minus five or so. Let's bring up the lightness, say maybe plus 10 or so. And just while leaving our proof active, let's just toggle this layer. You can see here is just the straight conversion of our image with no corrections into canvas. If we go and print it directly, we're gonna have some problems around these lights. But with this correction, we're fixing those problems and things look much, much better here. It doesn't look the same as the original, right? If we go and compare to the original, here's the original and here's our print. It's not going to be the same. That's not the goal. You cannot possibly generate the same color. The goal is to have a print that still looks nice. It doesn't have problems here. And that's what this correction is letting us do. Now for this image, I do see some other changes in terms of like black tones and things like that. And I can keep adding more layers to this group to make other corrections to try and keep optimizing the print as far as I want to take it to make it look as close or as good as possible as a print. But I'm going to skip that and let's move on to looking at how we would adjust things in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, we go to View, Proof Setup, Custom, and here we can choose our options for Device to Simulate is the profile. So you'll see that the list here is very, very long, and that's why I've kind of filtered things down in the panels. We can go find the profile you want. So if you want to go in Profile for, say, sRGB, you choose that leave alone the preserve option. The rendering intent should most of the time be on relative color metric, but you may want to try perceptual when you're working with printer papers and see if you get a better result. And then leave on black point compensation. So just a couple of quick options here that will change the settings for you. And if you go up to the view menu, so that's how we set the options, but then it's proof colors turned on that actually give you the preview. So when this proof colors is on, the title tag is going to change a bit. I'm going to deselect my layer so it's not showing in the tab here. But you can see this sRGB right here. This is showing me what I'm proofing. So if I go up and change my proof to something else, if I go and proof for, say, P3, now it's telling me I'm getting a proof for P3. And as long as that's active with proof colors, that's what turns that on. So if I go check this, I turn off that proof and we no longer see that there. Now, if you want to see a gamut warning, you go click on gamut warning. And you can see that. Now with the gamut warning, you don't see any change in the tab here. So unless you're working with Lumenzio WebShop Pro, you just have to go click on the view menu to know what you're viewing for a gamut warning. 
just not as obvious, but you have similar options there. And for corrections, you just have to manually create that in Photoshop and you just try and control things. I would learn these shortcut keys, the command Y or command shift Y, which are really helpful for turning the soft proof or the warning on. And now click to this next video to learn more about getting great color in Photoshop.